Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas. I'm the Carb Addiction Doc. For the last 20 plus years, I've been a clinically practicing surgeon. I've shifted into the metabolic space and then now give guidance to a practice about metabolic health testing and how to manage people from a metabolic health perspective. And there are certain blood tests that everybody loves to do that I absolutely would never, ever recommend you getting because they scare the crap out of you. They are all directed to a particular medical treatment and they bear no bearing on metabolic health. So there's plenty of blood tests I wouldn't order, but I want to focus on those that my patients get their knickers in a knot in the doctor's order all the time, overinterpret and scare the crap out of the patient. So there's two categories here that I would never get. Never, ever get. Number one is NMR ratios, nuclear um, medical resonance ratios of your lipids. Nuclear magnetic resonance, sorry. Um, ratios of your lipid levels. And they love, the cardiologists and the lipidologists, in fact, love to look at, oh, what's my LDL number and what's my particle size and what's my... You don't need that. And the main reason they're doing it is to scare the crap out of you so that you'll take a statin. I've done several videos on this. You can look at the individual videos. But getting an ApoB, getting an LP little a to scare the crap out of you has no bearing on your metabolic health. You can look at total triglycerides, uh, calculated LDL, um, total cholesterol and HDL levels, and you look at the ratios of those as markers of disease. They do not cause disease. They're associated with markers of disease or health, but you do not need an NMR to determine your metabolic health. But they love to do that. And then when you get these panels, there's red lines all over the place. And then you're afraid and you're scared and you take a whole bunch of medications instead of interpreting, what am I doing? Or what can I do to correct those ratios and correct those profiles? Because metabolic health is primarily about what you eat, not what pills you take. Think that one through. Hi folks, Carb Addiction Doc here. And Ketone IQ has recently come out with a product. It's this, it's their regular Ketone IQ um, uh, ketone supplement, exogenous ketone. But this one contains caffeine, okay? And I've been playing around with it. I do get a boost. I've had some people just not like the caffeine. Uh, it gets their heart racing too much. I found value to this. However, here's what intrigued me. This Ketone IQ is made from a green tea extract. And the caffeine comes from green tea. And I, man, I didn't understand that. And I went to look at some of the green teas. I, I drink mostly rooibos tea, but I looked at some of my green teas. And the majority of my green teas that I have in my home contain a sizable amount of caffeine. So be very cautious. Look at the green tea you're drinking, especially if you're drinking it between dinner and bedtime when I try not to drink caffeine. Make sure that there is no caffeine there. Don't be fooled and know the product because this, this ketone IQ was an aha moment for me. Now, the green tea ketone IQ is something I use from time to time in the morning. I've been playing around with it as a surrogate for my first cup of coffee, on, particularly on run days for me. And I've noticed that it's a, it's a really, really cool thing to run on early in the morning. There's no way I'm going to take this in the evening. But look into the green tea. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I know other teas do. But check out your green tea and make sure it isn't laced with caffeine. The second set of stuff that I absolutely would not get, I would never, ever test MTHFR status. Oh, you've got MTHFR gene, you've got all irrelevant. Around 40% of Americans are positive. It's a genetic condition. Who cares? It's irrelevant, but we use it as a way to target people with these very expensive uh, supplements that the person doing the diagnostics usually sells you. You do not need to know what your NTFHR level is. You also, along those same lines, do not need to know what your homocysteine level is. Yes, but it correlates with heart disease. So what? What are you going to do about it? I'll tell you what you're going to do about it. You do not need 
to get your methylmalonic acid levels, MMA levels either. They're a factor of homocysteine. You don't need those levels, okay? What you need to know is what your red cell folate level is and what your B12 level is. And if they're low, you correct them by taking those products. You don't have to buy the expensive products that they're selling you. You can to waste your money. But ultimately, that's all that matters. Is my B12 okay? Is my folate okay? You don't need to know the status of those other health issues. Because all that testing, what can they do about it? Scare the crap out of you and give you methylated folate and methylated B12. So I never test those. But I do look at red cell folate and I do look at B12. The next one is your iodine levels. Oh, we've got to do a hair test or we do a skin test. Iodine levels, my iodine. I never do that. You don't need to test iodine levels. What do you do? You test your thyroid levels. And you make sure every day you've got a small amount of iodine going in. And as long as you've got a trickle of iodine going in, it's very well concentrated in the human body, in the brain and in the thyroid. You don't need massive amounts. You don't need to be afraid you're taking too little or too much. But usually, again, the purveyors of medication are going to sell you these tests and then sell you the supplements. Take a low-dose thyro- uh, iodine supplement every day, either as salt or oh, well, I don't get it. as salt or as an iodine supplement, if it's not in your salt, and you don't have to worry about iodine levels. And then the next one that I never test is your omega f- uh, fatty acid levels, three and six omega fatty acid levels and all the EPAs and DHAs. Folks, these are, these are long polysaturated, polyunsaturated fatty acids. They are hydrophobic. They don't float in water. These molecules, when you consume them as six omega fatty acids, which are the seed oils and that kind of thing, or threes, which are the fish oils, they get absorbed into the lymphatics. For a little while, they dump into the blood vessels only to be, and they transport in something called a chylomicron, which is this huge big transport molecule. So you don't really have access to them free floating in the blood. They then get transported to the fat cells where they get stored in the fat cells. They also get taken up by certain um, cells that require those three omega fatty acids. Then from the fat cells, in the fat cells, they get conjugated into a uh, uh, triglyceride, three three fatty acids with a glycerol molecule. So you can't measure the individual levels. And they sit there and then those triglycerides get transported in LDL to the cells of your body where they get taken up. The liver does turn a certain amount of EPA into DHA, but it's a very low uh, slow steps. So you really want to take DHA as a supplement. And if you're taking adequate supplement, you don't need um, to take a, to, to measure the levels. But measuring those levels is, again, a way to sell you a product to scare you. I'm a huge taker. I personally take DHA um, fish oil. We have a history of Alzheimer's in my family but and, and a condition that I'm going to die of. But um, you don't need to look at those levels. And then the final set of things that I would not do, and this is going to be very controversial, I would not do any allergy testing. I would not do stool bacterial testing or allergy testing. And here's why. Allergy testing does not tell you whether you're allergic to something. Allergy testing tells me whether your immune system recognizes something or not. And the immune system is geared to protect you from certain things or at least say, hey, watch out, there's incoming stuff coming in. Okay? Think of the immune system as being a green light, an amber light, or a red light. If it's a red light, you're going to know about this anaphylactically. You're going to have an obvious reaction. If you get a bee sting, everybody, everybody that gets stung by a bee is going to have a reaction, a local reaction. That's natural and normal. Some people are going to go on to have an anaphylactic reaction. You don't need a test to tell you that. Your body will tell you. Okay? So I think the value and the overcalling of allergy testing is so awful. And what I've seen is people that have had this crap scared about them. They've had allergy testing. You're allergic to this. You're allergic to this. Basically, you're allergic to the air that you breathe. So hold your breath. 
But I get people eating almost nothing or eating one or two pieces of food because I'm allergic to that. I'm allergic to that. Again, it's, it's up to you, but that's a crock of shit, in my opinion. There's a medical phrase for you. And if you're going to pay attention to every little allergic response or every little immune action against a particular product, you're going to be unable to live on planet Earth. Because the reality is you're bumping into everything that your body is defending itself against all the time. So you don't need to do all that allergy testing. Same thing with your gut. You're measuring what's in shit. Who cares? Oh, I've got leaky gut. I've got SIBO. I've got... Those are just ways to create fear in you and to create a record of you must treat this. Now, yes, of course, there's bacterial overgrowth and that kind of thing in certain people. But you've got to know about it. But when 100% of people that have a SIBO test or have a, a bacterial colony test in there from their gut poop, if 100% of people have all these red flags and then get treated with all these things, I will tell you that the testing is a way to sell you product. Not for your benefit, but for the benefit of the prescribers. And there's always a honeymoon period, kumbaya, magically cured. And then you're not. So be very, very cautious of that. You'll never, ever, ever get me doing that. Will I test for H. pylori? Will I test for C. diff in certain people as a surgeon? Absolutely I will. But there's an indication for it. There's an indication for it. But your biome is your biome. And you can modify it by what you're eating, not by, based on what you're taking as a supplement or some thing to kill stuff off. That's crazy. I am the carb addiction doc. Please be careful out there for being taken advantage of or led down rabbit holes. I see person after person after person that has been misled by either nefarious or possibly naive, well-meaning people. But over-testing, over-hyping does not help you. And the problem then is you live such a narrow life that you get sick because of the narrowness of your life. Happy to explore that further. Leave all the comments you want to. I know there are going to be people, oh, you don't understand everything. Be pragmatic in terms of what you look for and understand what you're going to do with the result. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I hope this helps. Don't waste your money. Live happy, live healthy.